Hey guys, it's Blair with Revit Auto. And in this video, we're gonna be working on the Top Don Phoenix Light. Now this is a entry level inexpensive scan tool, which means I wanted to buy it, try it out, and see if it's worth having in your guys' shop. So this is a $1,300 scan tool. It has bi-directional functions. It's supposed to be an easy and intuitive use scan tool. Now, what I always like to do is give my first impressions just by opening and holding the scan tool. I am typically like an Autel scan tool fanboy. Uh, some of the older mentor touches I really like. I'm not a really big fan of the new Boshes, but I'm excited to try this product because they don't really have a lot of market share right now, but uh, I'm excited to see how great it becomes. So it comes with a super nice uh, serial number product code so that you can go ahead and uh, register this. So we'll have to get this hooked up to the internet, I'm sure of it. Let's see if we can slide this baby out. And the scan tool itself is actually way smaller than I was expecting. This is a tiny little scanner. I would say that this is just the exact same size as my MX-808. But what's awesome about this is that it just fits in the palm of your hand and they have this really cool little handheld right here. So that's pretty freaking awesome. And then built in, this is your car dongle. This is what goes into your OBD2 port. So this is a pretty awesome, badass little contraption here. And the case itself is pretty nice. It feels really rugged and the uh, rubber protection on the outside goes just a little bit further past the screen. I'm not sure how strong the screen itself is, but uh, I'll be sure to do an update video in a couple of months to tell you how many scratches and stuff I get on the screen. So it looks like this is a USB-C instead of a uh, USB micro SD, which means that this is probably a little bit of a newer tablet. And it's got all the information on the back here, serial number and all that jazz. So this scan tool does say that it was made in China, but I don't know of any American made scan tools at this point moving forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to boot it up. I'm just holding down the power button and it uh, just fired up. Looks like it's got a nice BMW M series uh, motor as the background photo, which is always pretty cool. And uh, since hitting the power button, I think it's been about 16 seconds and we are just finishing the booting up. So I'm going to assume that this is going to have probably the average of a 45 second boot up time. Anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute is pretty average for a scan tool that's going to do you a bunch of different solid things. So uh, we're just at about the 45 second count and it is just a regular tablet. So if you're an Android user, you're really going to love using something like this, especially when it's so small and native. And the other thing that's fantastic is that it's got a camera right here. So if you're working on something, you'll be able to just grab a quick photo and go right into your media library. So now it's fully booted up. So the boot up time is a little bit longer than I was expecting. It was actually closer to a minute, but it boots it up and it brings me right to the home page and tells me about everything I pretty much need to go through right from the get go. So it's going to ask me to log in and create an account so that I can go ahead and log into my top down account, which I have not created yet. This is the first time I'm holding the scan tool but uh, it's got a couple of cool things that I'm looking at right now. So it allows you to remote assist, which is gonna be super awesome, which means that if one of my employees is using this scan tool and they're in a shop or they're on the road somewhere and they're not exactly sure what's going on, I'll be able to just remote PC into this tablet using the Wi-Fi connection and then be able to do live analytics on the car. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the rest of it, it just seems like it's a pretty cool layout. It's got the ability to print right from the screen if I just click the print button. And let's just go ahead and just throw this on a car that we know has a problem and see what we do. I also didn't even realize that there was another box here with some more goodies. So the first thing, a type C, so that's for the charger. And then, oh, this is pretty cool. Clearly this device is sold all around the world because they have given us uh, things that are designed for outside the United States. I'm not sure what connector that is, but it looks like it's pretty universal. And then this is not smart to drop. Uh, and this is your wall mount charger, but this is a uh, VCI extender. So there's going to be some cars 
where the module for the VCI is actually gonna be too large, and you'll go ahead and plug this in and then plug this portion into the VCI. What's nice is that it's color-coded, which is a very reoccurring theme with the scan tool, but it's also nice because it's gonna give you a little bit of an eye grabber if you don't listen to the beeping telling you to remove your VCI. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just unsheath my weapon and plug it right on in. If this is your first time joining with Revit, you're gonna understand pretty quick, I am weird. Okay, so I'm gonna click Intelligent Diagnostics and I have the key in the on position and I have made sure that the VCI is connected to the scan tool. I did that just prior. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and click Diagnostic. This is the correct VIN for the vehicle that we're working on. And I'll just go ahead and see what happens. So I can hear the devices communicating with the VCI because I can hear it beeping. This all looks good. Yep, it's a RAM 1500. So earlier I did not see the option to just select RAM, uh, but it had me select Dodge and now we're in the Chrysler. So if I click health report, it says just make sure the key's in the on position. We'll see what goes down here. So I'm assuming that this is just going to go through every single system and read all of the possible codes. So what's nice here is a lot of times you just have black lettering as you go across. But what's cool here is that it has green for pass and red for fail. So what's pretty great is that we can just go through these codes here and we can know if we're looking for a problem and we're just looking for the red lettering, which might seem monotonous and small, but when you look at a screen all day, it really helps to have those little tiny user-friendly issues. Oh, what's also cool is it looks like if I just press this button, it's going to tell me what is the definition that's going on. So you can see here, before I've even had to click into any of these, it automatically generates a report of all the codes, right? So that's awesome. That is so cool. So it actually sectioned all the things that were good down to the bottom and all the things that were bad up to the top. What's fantastic about that is most of the time when you do this, it's just everything's just telling you there's a fault code and it's black but this now color codes it and puts it up to uh, the top of like, hey, this is what's going on, so you don't have to fuss around and figure out what's going on down here. So we already know that this engine was having issues with the oil pressure sensor circuit, which we are concerned that maybe there was a, uh, a really bad oil filter, and we know that some of these motors really like to have a Mopar filter. So we went ahead and we uh, installed that. And we know that this code only happens on the first start of the day. So we're gonna go ahead and diagnose and see what's going on further in. But I'm just gonna go ahead and see if this will clear the codes. All right, cool, so it cleared all the codes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sit in the car and start it. So what's pretty awesome is that this scan tool has a lot of features that I really, really enjoy. And it's super user friendly. And this is the pre-repair report. And what that does is it shows you what all your codes are gonna be. And since I cleared the codes, all the codes are gone away. But I can go ahead and save this or I can just click back and get out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just show you what I did. I just clicked health report made sure that the key was in the on position. It's gonna take roughly about 30, 40 seconds to go through all the systems here. And we don't have any codes at this time because we just cleared all the codes to see if this would communicate with every single system and then rechecking to see what's going on. So if this vehicle had come in and let's say that we were doing an oil change, we could incredibly easily just sell additional services that this car may need from just these two little features. And the first one's going to be printing, which right here on this screen, you just click this button. I'm not hooked up to a printer, so it's not gonna work for me. But if I had set up my printer through the Wi-Fi network, I'd be very easily just click and print, which is pretty awesome. Now, if I wanted to generate a report, and this is gonna be awesome for a lot of body shop folks, if you're doing uh, an insurance claim, you can do your pre and your post. So this is my pre-repair, my report type, and you can make it pre, post, or just a diagnostic scan. So I'm gonna say, you know, this is my, let's say this is my post repair, because let's say that we've already fixed the issue with the oil pressure sending unit, and uh, we've already changed the filter, and everything's happy. So we could add notes if we wanted to here, and just, uh, say, you know, really quickly, uh, replaced 
and serviced items in invoice 1066. And I like to make everything highlighted in the invoice, that way I'm not typing things over and over again. So I'll just go ahead and click enter on that one. And then uh, I'm not super Android friendly. So once we do this, we can just go ahead and click OK. And then this is where you'd put your shop information in. Now I've not set up the scan tool. I literally just opened it out of the box. These are my first impressions of the scan tool. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna upload our, uh, upload our logo, put in our address, the technician name, so I can add myself, I can add some of my other employees that work with me, and the customer name as well, we could type in here just for tracking and click OK. Once I do that, it creates this nice little printout showing that everything is okay. So I can just go ahead and click save or share. Now if I was connected to Wi-Fi, I'm sure I could share this to my email. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click save. And then that report is going to be saved, I believe, in the section that is at the home screen that says reports. So we'll go ahead and just click back and see if we can go all the way back. That's pretty cool. So this is just alerting me that the VCI is still on the car, and once I click OK and I plug it back in, it'll turn off. So let's just go here and look at scan history. Currently the network is, so no records of scan history, so let's click the home page, and let's go to my report. And you can see here that it has the report that we saved. Scroll up and down to turn the pages, that's cool. So it gives you a little walkthrough. Double click or use two fingers to zoom in and out. And now you can see here that we have our health report. And we can actually zoom in and zoom out just like what it says. Now if we wanted to share it, we can click share. We can do a Bluetooth share for an email, which is probably gonna be the easiest. Uh, and I have no idea what that means. So if you're technologically savvy and you see that, tell me what that means. So let's go ahead and go back in to the Phoenix. We'll go back. We'll go back into Intelligent Diagnostics. We'll go ahead and turn the key off and then back on. I'm gonna escape from scan history here and just let it do its system here. So VCI connect, read the VIN. I hear the VCI start beeping. I know that it's starting to communicate. And we recently did an oil change on this and the truck does have a message for the engine oil life. So it says oil change is due. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just see if I can click on diagnostic. This is the correct vehicle. And I'm gonna click service. And it lets us do a battery reset, which is pretty cool. Some vehicles like that. Tire pressure sensor reset, that's, some, that's pretty crazy. Electronic throttle sensor reset, ABS bleeding, adapter front lighting system, and keys and programming. So that'd be pretty cool to test those things out. So what I'm going to do is try to see if I can just find the service for this. Let's see if we can navigate this well. So this is my first time using this. So let me figure this out. Oh, you know what? I'm not connected to the internet. So let's just try search Bluetooth. So we're connecting to the Bluetooth. And let's see if it's gonna pull up the information from the vehicle's VIN and tell me how to reset the oil life. Well, it doesn't go through and tell you exactly how to do that, but let's see if it has RAM in here for just says Dodge. So it does not have RAM in here, so we'll just have to go under Dodge. Now, I wonder if later updates are going to call it a RAM. Chrysler, Jeep, and Dodge. Okay, cool. Mess with me there. So the ignition switch is on. This is the correct VIN. Ooh, manual reset. Let's see. That'll probably tell us how to go through and do it for the Dodge. So we'll just go ahead and play around with it just because we have the time. Two methods, so I'm assuming, let's see here. So this is what the display controls of the instrument cluster on the steering wheel, which is what this vehicle is equipped with. So I'm just gonna click back and see what the other option is. So we're just gonna go back into the Ram 1500. 2010, 2017, this is 2012, and method two is keyless, but we actually don't have the keyless function. This is just a regular key. So it tells you how to manually reset it both ways, but I want to see if it can do the automatic reset. So I'm going to click auto reset, automatic scan, and let's see if it scans from the Bluetooth into the scan tool. So it says this function is not supported on this vehicle. All right, I'm just going to click yes, and I'm just going to go ahead 
and do the manual reset procedure. I'm gonna click Dodge. We're gonna go back to the Ram 1500 truck and I'm gonna do method one because that's what we have. I'm gonna start the truck. The only reason I'm starting it is so I can turn the steering wheel. And then I'm just gonna follow the prompts here and uh, reset it. So I actually know how to reset it, but this is the correct way to do it. So we'll go ahead and just reset the life. So I've used the scan tool for about 10 minutes, and so far I really like my first impression with it. I love a scan tool that I can easily hold, and I like something that has a robust feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a really in-depth dive into the scan tool. I'm gonna try it on as many different vehicles as I possibly can get my hands on. I'm gonna update it. I'm gonna figure out how to go onto the Top Down website and actually do a product registration, which I'll talk about that in the next video. But this is just my first impression with a scan tool. And like I said, guys, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions about this scan tool, please be sure to ask because I'm going to be actively filming, answering any of those questions that you guys have. I'm Blair with Revit Auto. You're watching Tool Tuesday. And as always, happy motoring.